Mita Manzor, you wrote, directed, and produced We Are Lady Parts about a group of Muslim women who form a punk band. Uh, now, I know you had a very personal connection to this story when, when you created it. What was the initial, that initial germ of an idea that eventually, you know, blossomed into the show? Yeah, um, you know, it sort of in part was born out of a frustration, um, you know, working as a new writer, I was... I had been called in from a couple of production companies to to write some like heavy hitting dramas about very dark stories about Muslim women. And I was being asked to write these stories. And and I was kind of confused on one level because I all my specs are comedy scripts and I'm you know, I love comedy. So, you know, I was sort of feeling a frustration that there is really this one dimensional representation of Muslim women. Um, And so I was being asked to look at this aspect of my identity you know, as a drama. So I kind of went away and just thought about like, if I could make my dream show and I had to talk about this aspect of being a Muslim woman, what would it be? And that's really when I kind of came up with We Are Lady Parts. You know, it would be a comedy. It would have surreal moments. It would have lots of punk music that I would write with my siblings. You know, I just really kind of created this this idea and this pitch basically that encapsulated the world I wanted to create, the characters I wanted to show, the tone, the everything. And I just took that around to different production companies and tried to see who would buy it. Um, so yeah, in part born out of frustration and then which kind of made me lean into the things that I love. Uh, and what was it about punk that made that sort of the genre of choice to kind of center these characters and the story around? Oh, I don't know. You know, it's just punk is is probably the thing that I was like loving growing up as a teenager um and it was certainly something that was at, being played at home and it, it's again not usually the kind of thing you would expect um Muslim women to be passionate about but actually so many of my friends we you know we were all into it and you kind of felt like the odd outsider being into the music but but really there's so many people who kind of who kind of love that music from all kinds of backgrounds and you know it allowed me to you know show the complexity of identity you know when you kind of put punk and muslim and women together it just allows you to go into nuances and show different kinds of ways of being and and again because you know punk is that anarchic spirit that joyful silliness um and again it's not something you associate or we have been shown on tv as that you know muslim women have pretty much been shown as serious, long-suffering, one-dimensional wives of terrorists. So, you know, to be able to use punk as a kind of conduit to explore their silly, the silliness of these women, their kind of nuances, the anger, the rage, the joy was just like, it kind of felt like the, the perfect vehicle. And, you know, I got to write, you know, music was my first passion. I wanted to be a singer-songwriter, but more in the ilk of like, I was obsessed with Paul Simon. So I was more kind of, you know, singer songwriter brown girl Bob Dylan was my my dream my sister was much more into the punk stuff so just you know allowing myself to bring all this music into it was just super cool uh and as you mentioned you know Muslim woman being un- underrepresented except in these very kind of stereotypical roles uh does that increase the pressure placed on like you and your show to sort of represent what is an incredibly broad and diverse community just in one show uh yeah no absolutely I was like frequently freaking out um you know it's just that pressure of am I gonna fail at representation if I mess this up or you know and it's and it was really interesting it was kind of a storyline I could put back into the show um just the kind of the navigating the stresses of representation um I could give to my my characters because they're all artists and I could also because I have a whole load of them I could give them different positions some more conservative others more bullshit others more confrontational and just really have that conversation in the show which I think you know when I talk to other writers coming through like the one thing that I always get asked is like how do you overcome the fear of messing up because there's so few voices of ours on screen you know, ish, the shit will come down on you if you do, like you will be, you will be called out. So it's this fear that is so debilitating sometimes for new writers when they're trying to represent communities that don't get put on screen. So, you know, 
it was definitely something I went through, but I just really hope that the sort of the show encourages new writers, other stories, and you know, the more diversity there is, the less fear there is, and the bolder the work is. So it's so that's what I hope. I don't think I answered your question. I just went on a rant. Sorry. <laughs> no, you absolutely did. Um, and uh, you know, having these the characters that you do represent are also different uh, uh, and, and specific. Uh, it, it, did, do you feel like you like share more in common with any one of them personally? Like any one of them is like closer to who you are basically as a, as an individual? Um, yeah, I suppose like Amina, the lead, I could, could put pour all my anxiety in, but then you could put a bit of the rage into a character like Syra. Um, Syra is quite, quite inspired by my older sister, who's really angry as a teenager. Um, and and yeah, it was just kind of drawn from a lot of the artists who I was seeing in London, like, you know, poets, musicians, playwrights who were kind of expressing their identities in like a really full new way, you know, really combating this sort of false dichotomy of like us and them. Instead, it's sort of like exploring their, the complexity and the contradictions and the silliness. And I was kind of inspired by the people around me creating art. Um, and that really went into the work as well as my own you know, personal, you know, issues, I suppose. <laughs> um, and you mentioned writing the original songs, uh, you know, with your siblings. Uh, did did the ideas for the songs come out of the show or were the, did the songs come first and the show kind of, you know, the storylines kind of wrapped around it? It was a kind of mixed bag. Like sometimes I just like Bash Bashir with the good beard came, I think, without any, yeah I didn't know where it would come in the episode but I like I found a perfect place for it so it was some of them were already there I was actually like trying to brainstorm funny song titles and then took that from there um so it was sort of like some of them came from the show others you know it was just from like messing around with my siblings I mean that was so great what was so crazy about making this show you know it was just like weeks in a studio with my my brothers my sister just being like cool just hanging out and making music it was it was crazy, um, but it was so joyful and fun and 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 it just felt like, yeah, I couldn't, sometimes it was like, I was so lucky I got to make the show because I was like, oh, this is the thing I wanted to do. I got to make it with those, all the people I love and, you know, use their creativity and put it in the show and make it awesome. So it was, yeah, it was so cool. Uh, now you've written uh, before and directed before, but is this the first time like you wrote, directed, produced like all of that for a single series? And, and what was that like? Yeah, it was. It was. So I've like directed um, episodic stuff in the UK. Um, you know, some I did a bunch of new comedies just as a director. Um, I did some Doctor Who, which is, you know, sci fi show in the UK. Um, and then as a writer, I'd written like on a couple kids TV shows. So I'd like had those two things going, but I was sort of writing my own original stuff on the side, um, which was kind of cool because when Lady Parts happened, I had sort of credits, writing credits, directing credits. And I, I and actually a, a load of short films as well that I was kind of exploring the kind of tone and style I wanted to do. Um, but I think what really allowed me, or gave me confidence to kind of take on the writing and the directing was, you know, the UK broadcaster Channel 4 commissioned a pilot. So I had to write and direct like a short version of the, of what the show would be. And I could hire like all the HODs because it was sort of low stakes at that point. It's like, you know, it's just a comedy pilot that chuck it online and see if anyone likes it. So I could basically bring on the dream team and no one, no one like questioned me. I could cast who I wanted. So I had such autonomy in bringing the team together. And so when the pilot was well-received, and Peacock came on board, you know, I, I felt like there was, I had confidence in myself and people had confidence in me. And that really allowed me to kind of take on those roles. Um, and the show has been well received, as you mentioned, uh, it was nominated at the Gotham Awards, the Independent Spirit Awards, and of course, uh, you know, six BAFTA nominations and three wins, including one for yourself. Uh, what was, what was that moment like hearing your name be called and, and being recognized for this show? Oh, no, thank you for, for shouting out all the accolades. Um, the BAFTA was pretty cool. I mean, the BAFTA was cool because Olivia Coleman was giving it to me. And so I just had like a Olivia, Olivia Coleman freak out. Um, and it was it was cool as well, you know, it, being recognised in the, in the UK, um, you know, from the sort of British comedy peeps are quite, 
you know, it can be quite small here, but there's, it's just nice to be accepted because, you know, I'm so inspired by the stuff um, that, you know, the British comedians um, who've kind of sort of been working before me, but, but also like to be able to go to LA and, you know, go to Indie Spirit Awards was, was super fun as, as well. You know, it's like a whole different world, a whole different vibe, but it's so nice that the show has been embraced in the US as well. And, you know, in a way that, you know, when we were pitching it, when we were developing it, there was always this question of like, will it translate? Will it, will American audiences get the specifics? And, you know, of course, because audiences are, you know, are more advanced than we ever give them credit for. Um, and also because like, I was like, I've, I was pretty much raised on Malcolm in the middle. I don't think my storytelling style is going to be super challenging for anyone. Um, but it was just so interesting that there are those conversations being had. And, you know, so it's been so cool to see the show go down well um, over there as well. Uh, well, uh, congratulations on on the show and the recognition it's gotten uh, so far. Knock on wood to continue. Um, and uh, thank you so much for, for chatting with me about it. Thanks so much, Daniel. It's my pleasure.